Hello. They, you unmuted the thing, right? Hello, everyone. Welcome to setup block number whatever. Uh, Tetris the Grandmaster. Uh, when I found out that Pi was coming to this marathon, I was like, okay, we have to find an opportunity to play TGM. Because, like, you don't get two uh, TGM GMs in the same ver area very often unless you're in Seattle or Pier 21. I guess Japan is an extension. Um, Just Japan in general. Yeah. yeah. Ah! Ah. Okay. Anyways, um, we're going to play TGM. You ready? Yep. In three, All right, three. two, one, go. go. So this is Tetris the Grandmaster. It's an arcade Tetris game developed by Arika um, with the idea of like Sega Tetris, but actually hard. And oh boy, does it live up to that name, or that ideal rather. Um, so what's really cool about this game, kind of in short, is that you've probably heard of this game. It's infamous for being stupidly difficult uh, in every way possible. What's really wonderful about this game is that, yeah, it's stupidly difficult, but it also gives you the tools to deal with that difficulty. Uh, the rotation system in this game, the Arika rotation system for Tetris, um, is really, really cool and allows you to do a lot of really interesting uh, moves, but only ones that are, I, at least I think, are like, they make sense, like you can kind of logic them out. It's not like... Like no ridiculous T-spin triple. Yeah. Reason. It's not guideline Tetris where you press a button and just pray the thing that you want to happen will happen. Um, and usually it will because SRS is broken. Yeah. Oh, that was a misdrop. Um, anyways, so what we're trying to do here is get the GM rank. In order to do that, we have to clear up to level 999. Notice the little level counter now at the side of our playing counts fields. Counts as a level, and also each line clear counts as a level. Yep. So in addition to being better for score, obviously, you also want to clear as many Tetrises as possible because there is a, a line clear animation, and so the less line clears total you have, the less time is spent in that delay, Correct. basically. Yeah, um, so in this early part of the game, while the pieces are still visibly falling, because that's not going to be a constant, um, we are going to be stacking relatively high. Uh, it's kind of, you have to strike a balance between going fast and safety strats. The benefit of stacking high is twofold. For one, uh, as Pi just talked about, score is affected by your level. So the later you're clearing lines, the more points you're getting. Uh, for two, though, the pieces have to fall less far in order to clear when you're stacked up higher on the screen. So, also have I mentioned that it's, like, impossible to play this game and commentate at the same time? Like, I can solo commentate Mega Man runs all day long, but this game is just too much for my brain to handle. It takes a lot of concentration. I'm impressed how well you're doing so far, honestly. Um, anyways, so the requirements for getting GM. So, we have to clear through level 999 in under 13 minutes and, oh gosh, uh, under 13 minutes and 30 seconds. Oh boy. Um, in addition to that, we have to meet several mid-game requirements. Um, basically score and time... Oh gosh darn it. Oh gosh darn it. Uh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> no, no, this is not super great right now. Uh, score and time requirements at 300 and 500. As we um, said, this game is very difficult, and you have to really strike a balance between playing fast, which is obviously ideal, and playing safe enough to actually survive. Correct. And then you also just have to not make dumb mistakes. Because even the best player is going to make dumb mistakes. That's kind of the way of Tetris. Okay, we're on our way back down, though. It's all good was totally intentional, and I already made another mistake. <laughs> <laughs> this game is hard, okay? Let's just do that. Um, so during this part of the game, uh, when you get, I guess, like, single holes, um, you know, just like one hole being covered by another bit of, you know, another piece of... another Tetris piece, um, it's often faster and smarter not to clear them, because clearing holes takes time, and you'll often lose more time and make more mistakes trying to get rid of the hole than you would by not having the hole in the first place. Uh, that is going to change as we get into the higher speeds of the game where pieces take less time to fall into place. 
Okay, we are just totally clear, and I was just stuck at a level stop there, so it's time to talk about level stops. So in this game, when you reach a 99 level or 998, uh, one sec. The level counter will not increase until you clear another line. Yeah, that. So, uh, if you're not paying attention to exactly what level you're on, you could be stuck at level, like, 299 or 399 yeah, for like a long I was. time. Like I and was. I don't know how long I was stuck, but I yeah, was. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. Especially, like, for some reason, the first section of 20G, I just completely lose track. Yeah, once I'm into 20G, I have a lot of trouble actually watching the level counter because I'm too busy focusing on 20G. So speaking of G, let's explain G. Um, G is a kind of Tetris uh, scientific unit for the amount of tiles, uh, like amount of squares that a piece falls in a frame. In this game, the speed is going to make it all the way up to 20G when we hit 500. Now for you astute Tetris historians out there, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, there's only... Uh, 20 columns on this playing field, and you'd be correct. Um, once we hit 500, the speed is going to be 20G, meaning that the piece will instantly um, hit the bottom, you know, hit the stack once it spawns. So once we get there, our playing style is going to change very drastically. Uh, for now, we're in the section of the game called Awkward G, where the speed is going up in a rather unpredictable fashion. And I just hit 20G. Pi's better than me at this game. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I believe your PB is what, like a mid 10 something? 10 26. Yeah, my PB is a 12 24, so like it's fine. We're just having fun playing Tetris. That was yeah, this is not looking so good for me right now. That's unfortunate. I think I'm doing okay at the moment. Not amazing. So once you're in this high of speed like I'm in, or you know, in effectively infinite speed like uh, Pie Pusher is in, I totally lost my train of thought playing Tetris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it becomes very important to stack for the most optimal piece maneuverability. Uh, what that essentially boils down to is you want column five to be your highest column. And if possible, you want column six to also be higher and to be, you know, typically the second highest column. This is going to allow you to be able to move pieces um, to lower altitudes uh, next door, essentially. Yeah, um, so which you see how... means you can move pieces as much as possible. And when you're in this uh, speed, you need the stack to be lower. So you see how I'm sort of stacking the middle up as high as I can? Um, yeah. That's basically so you can slide pieces down along the stack. Yeah, we, we like to call it pyramid stacking um, as an homage to the best puzzle stacking game, Pyramid. Oh, that still worked. Okay. I thought I just totally hecked myself there, but I did not. doing over there, buddy? Uh, not bad. Great! Just putting pieces down, having fun, you know? Yeah! Tetris is a good time. My stack is pretty okay right now. It's a little bit of a modern art sculpture, but not in a bad way. I don't like this, though. Uh, this is an eyepiece dependency that I'm not a fan of. A big thing you want to not do in this game is build things that can only be cleared by one or... Oh, 
heck? Ooh. I'm gonna stop talking now. And, uh, find a way to fix this. How about that smooth slide, though? Yeah, you want to try to avoid building a stack that requires one specific piece to be able to fix it, because... Because then the game won't give you that piece, and you'll just die and be sad. The randomizer... Oh, I'm, I'm super dead. Oh. Okay. I went for a synchro. I went for a synchro to save it. I couldn't save it. That's okay. The randomizer tries to avoid it to some extent. But Here, you it's focus. Not. I'll, I'll okay. explain. So yeah, the randomizer in this game works essentially where it has a four the most the four most recent pieces it remembers whenever it rolls you know a one out of seven for one of those four pieces in the piece memory it'll roll again it will roll again up to four times in a row then whatever it gets on that fourth roll is your piece. Um, this system is a lot better than pure randomness uh, because it biases against repeat pieces, which are really hard to stack for. It's not really that amazing, though, you know, especially compared to the later games in this series and, uh, you know, stuff like bag randomizers featured in other Tetris games. Uh, it's not great. Um, you can get punished really, really easily for not getting the piece you need. So, Pi is almost in the 900s here. So... In the background there, the important thing, the GM fetus. A beautiful baby GM will be born in like a minute. Hopefully. I assume Look you at my hit score. I assume ooh, that's not an amazing score. I hit um, all the requirements up to 20 G. You should be fine then. Just make sure you get some Tetrises. So score at the very end can be a little bit of an issue. Um you need to be at I think 126k maybe it's 124k 126 126 which is just a little bit above the point score required for S9 cuz the grade All right got S9 good the grade is directly in this game only is directly correlated to the score So Pi needs about 6000 points uh which is you know maybe like a Tetris, Tetris and a a Tetris and a double I think you'd need a little more than just one Tetris. Shit, this isn't good. You got this. I believe. That line piece. Okay. That's it. All right, that's the score requirement. Now all Pine needs to do is finish the game. And there you go, GM. Oof. So in this game, the credits are a victory lap. So we'll let... Uh, Pi enjoy his victory here. All in all, I'm very happy to have survived as far as I did for not having played this game in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, I'm a little disappointed in my time, but hey, you I survived. Finished. That's that's what really matters in a marathon. Like in a, a one-off game, that is that's an accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah, given that neither of us have like warmed up today or anything like that, just surviving through the game sub 12 even. Very good. All right, so after this, so uh, maximum meme All mode codes. deathmatch. So uh, if you noticed in, when we were on the title screen here, uh, Proto is actually playing in what's known as Uki mode. There's uh, six... Oh, God, I don't even remember the rest of the codes. There's six codes that you can input, those being... TLS, 20G, Uki, Big, Mono, and Reverse. I don't remember half of the codes. <laughs> I play enough all codes, I think. I the problem is, how do we even get this to start at the same time is kind of the question. Oh. Um... How about you just go? I'll just go. You just then? go. I'll do something else stupid after this. All right. Um, so yeah, this is all six mode codes. Uh, so essentially, what this is, you just start playing out. Be before I'll we start, we'll explain what all these are. So 20G, we talked about in the. It's the instant last gravity. One. You started instant gravity. Big mode is um, you have blocks that are twice as large on a side, uh, essentially simulating play on a five by ten playing field. Except in TGM one, you can do what's called odd blocking where you place a block on an odd-numbered tile, which is essentially instant death in big mode. Uh, Uki mode is a sound effect swap Easter egg. Rev mode, as the name implies, reverses the playing field 180 degrees, so the pieces spawn from the bottom and rise up to the top. 
Mono mode makes it so all of the pieces are the same color. TLS, or temporary landing system, is the little, like, ghost piece that you saw in the first 100 levels of the game. Uh, it's completely irrelevant when there's uh, to 20 uh, in wow. 20g you just already play. already messing up <laughs> hey it's all right so this is all mode codes or as like we as we like to call it in the community maximum meme mode nice secret grade that's what i'm gonna do after this Ooh, that'd be cool um so yeah this is essentially reverse big 20g mono um are kind of the codes that matter um, and this matter. mode is, this is, this is real, this is real, uh, it's a thing. Uh, so big yeah, mode is a 50 is, uh, yeah. <laughs> about average. Nice. <laughs> I believe the Western record in, uh, maximum meme mode, uh, by Enchantress of Numbers is like an S4 or something. Enchantress of Numbers is also one of the few best rev mode players in the entire world, so... Not exactly easy. Hey, look, Pi has already destroyed my leaderboard. Okay, <laughs> sorry um, about that. I'll do I'll do my meme, I guess, uh, and then we will move on to Fia. Um, so what I'm gonna do is a little uh, Easter egg called Secret Grade. Uh, what Secret Grade essentially is is uh. we are going to create a specific pattern of holes in the stack. Um, specifically, it's basically kind of a zigzag sort of thing. Uh, which you can see is kind of starting to form. Um, and so, you want to make it all the way from the left wall to the right wall, and then turn around and then go back, and every hole you make is an additional grade point, basically. And the game does recognize this and gives you a secret grade of whatever grade you get. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, once you get up to, like, past the halfway point, it it becomes very difficult to continue this pattern and to yeah, get GM requires... Yeah, especially as the, the speed gets faster and faster and faster. To get GM in this requires not only an incredible amount of skill to be able to put your piece there, but also luck just to yeah. survive near the top with a very specific pattern. Yeah, at the highest, highest level, like literally as in physical altitude on the screen, uh, this mode is more or less just random chance survival. Um, it's absolutely brutal. Um, I believe Kitadu um, holds the Western record in this mode. So I have made my hole for my turnaround. Now I just have to stack over it um, in order to kind of successfully complete. No, okay, well, that was a bad move. Rule number one of TGM, never never back out of your move once you've made it, or you will... Uh, I kind of screwed this up. That's okay. We'll just down stack and try again. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Kitaru has a GM in TGM 1, but he definitely does in TGM 2. I'm pretty sure he's the only Western player with... Uh, that was the wrong hole. Uh, with uh, TGM 1 secret GM. I could be wrong about that. I'm not, you know, a TGM historian. There we go. There we go. The turnaround is one of the hardest parts of this. It's before you arguably get up to the... the hardest part until you're, like, actually going for GM and trying to survive in kind of the S9 void TM where essentially what you do is just repeatedly up stack and down stack until you happen to get the setup that will allow you to get GM. And that's just the strat, and there's not really much you can do about it. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna start getting a fairly high speed here soon. Yeah, hopefully you can make it to 200. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kind of have to uh, give it sort of a rest until 200 where we get kind of the speed reset and everything slows down and I can actually think again. So for now, I'm just I'm just chilling. That's not a great setup. Yeah, you need two J pieces. 
Ah, ah. okay. So S4? that was oh, S3 because the top hole wasn't uh, covered well. Okay, well, that was uh, TGM Block at the Speedruns Rochester Summer Fundraiser Marathon. Thanks for watching, donating, everyone. Uh, coming up next is going to be Fia uh, with Corundum Core. You can send it back to the, the break screen and mute the mixing board.